Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here as the recording of this Friday, March 4th, 2022, standing at the threshold of Market Street here in Celebration, Florida, where the fountain, I suppose it's too early for the fountain to be on and be quite operational, but this is basically a makeshift version, this town, of one of Walt's two visions of his Florida project. Epcot Center was kind of sort of what this was supposed to be, a place where people lived, shopped, etc. This is not exactly like what he had envisioned for Epcot, but in a roundabout way. Disney no longer owns the property of Celebration. And the other Florida project, which back when they did the press conference, him and his brother Roy Disney, who is basically going to be the focus of today's video. I know Walt gets a lot of credit, as he should, for the imagination, coming up with the ideas, but the person who built WDW was Roy Disney. And that's who I want to talk about. And the reason I am doing this episode, I'm not going to be stepping into the parks today. Also, a friend of mine just flew in to OIA from California, Orlando International. He is arriving soon. And I only have a very few select friends that really embrace the history of the Disney Corporation. Walt, Roy, the backstory. He doesn't know what he's in for. But because he can't check into his hotel till around 1 or 2 p.m., I'm going to take him out this morning and show him some historical spots that I think he's going to like. I'm inviting you to join me as I talk about, and as me and my friend talk about, Roy Disney. Shall you? And this will also tie in with the 50th anniversary of WDW. October 1st of last year, of 21, was the technical 50th anniversary. But their celebration goes on for, oh, there's a leaf blower. I hear a leaf blower off in the distance. The whole celebration goes on for a year and a half. And instead of going to the parks and doing park things, why not talk about the history and give a little backstory of how it all began here in Central Florida. Starting in the mid 60s and progressing up to the opening in 71. My shadow looks very lengthy there in the road. Just focusing on the yard work that's happening over here. And of course, I gotta start off with a piping hot caffeinated beverage. I have now acquired coffee for the morn and Bricky has arrived. Hello. You have done a red eye, they call a red it. Red eye, my first time ever in celebration and it is awesome. First impression. I really, really like it. You know, they're building something out, Disney's building something out in the desert, in the Palm Springs area, Rancho Mirage. So coming out here is even kind of more interesting, you know, because knowing that they're taking a crack at it again. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, so much better than what people make it out to be. So I was just doing in my intro, we're gonna, I'm gonna take you on a little tour of some WDW Roy history today. Oh, yeah. We're gonna start here in celebration and celebrate the 50th of Walt Disney World and talk about Roy, because I know Roy holds a special place in your heart, too. 100%. The, the weight that he took on in his brother's absence, it's a, why is that not a movie? And I like i like that you're not 100% awake right now. No. I can tell you're kind of sleepy. I'm like, you, did you sleep at all on the flight? No, I was editing a video. <laughs> <laughs> now, the fountain does not appear to be on, but I want you to notice something over here, Bricky. There, from the area you just flew from. Yeah. You might recognize a name right here. Look. Burbank. Is that the airport you flew out of? No, LAX. You flew out of, close enough. Burbank adjacent. I always look at the mileage though. I would have guessed it's about 2,500 miles, right? Not 2,197. It seems, it seems a little short. Yeah, I think it's 2,500. It's gonna be a beautiful day. Actually kind of nice house, not even, not too warm yet. It'll probably warm up, but right now, not too warm. All right, I gotta ask, what does this Market Street remind you of? This? Remind you of anything? Yeah. Like if Main Street USA went on vacation. Main Street, that's good. Right? Like if Main Street USA is like, oh, we're gonna go to the beach. I love it. Have you ever been to the Disney Studios in Burbank? Yes, yeah. Do you know the building that the the dwarfs are holding up? Yep. 
Yeah. The designer, his name was Michael Graves. Yeah. That's a that's a piece of Michael Graves' work. He did a uh, the Humana Building in Louisville, Kentucky, where I'm from. Really? Yeah. So his his work is so noticeable. He also did the uh, Swan and Dolphin. Yep. Right. Swan and yeah. Dolphin here. Not Michael Graves from, from the, the Mi Misfits. Exactly. I always, <laughs> always have to I have to mention that. Not. Not Danzig era of misfits, Michael Graves era of misfits. All different architect architects worked on all this. And then of course down here, Market Square. And what is this right here? It's now the Bank, Bank of America. But originally this was a preview center, oh, wow. which I'm gonna take you to, not the Celebration Preview Center, I'm gonna take you to the Walt Disney World Preview Center. I have always wanted to see that. You wanna get going? Let's do it. All right, give me your thoughts on the 7-Eleven. Best 7-Eleven I've ever seen. Have you ever seen a 7-Eleven looks like you're in on Sunset Boulevard? Absolutely not, even when I was on Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> this is amazing. Straight ahead, downtown Orlando. Lake Eola is where I'm headed. The site of the Florida Project Press Conference. A historical place. Made it over to Lake Eola. Fun fact, across the way there, that amphitheater that you see on the other side of Lake Eola is named after Walt Disney. Walt Disney Amphitheater over there on the distance. But back in November of 1965, at this now apartment building, this hotel, was where the Florida project was announced. Back then, they did not know the name of what the, the property would be called. But it happened right over here. Walt, Roy, and the then governor back in 1965 of Florida had a huge press conference right here off Lake Eola. Now, as I've always heard the story goes, basically Walt was buying a bunch of property under different names all around Central Florida, and no one knew about this, and there was one very ingenious detective-like media person who found out what was happening, so the press conference was impromptu, it was not planned. It was almost like you need to address this now before it kind of whirlwinds out of control. That's why, did you, did, I don't know if you know any of this history or not. Yeah, yeah. Kind of whirlwinded out of control. Get ahead of it. Walt and Roy flew over on November 15th of 65. And so it wasn't really like something that they planned on doing, but if they didn't, then the, the rumor mill would have been would, right. would have been started. So that's why they ended up doing this. This was called the Cherry Hotel or Cherry Tree hotel and I've never been inside this building. Today I'm going to try to get inside and see if I can find the room where it happened. But it wasn't called the Florida Project. And do you know why it's called Walt Disney World and not just Disney World? Uh, to pay tribute to Walt? To pay tribute to Walt. Roy wanted his brother to be honored because Disneyland in Anaheim. It's one word. Right. There's no Walt in front of that. Yeah. Huh. So think about this. If Walt had lived up until October of 71, it would just be Disney World. It wouldn't be Walt Disney World because he would have not wanted to have that name before that, only the last name. Things that make you wonder or make me wonder. Okay, I had to look it up. It's called. It was called the Cherry Plaza Hotel and the entrance they pulled into up here, see a vehicle going by was where their car pulled up, the governor, Walt, and Roy. Now, Walt himself even stated that he was the one with the ideas, but he would leave his brother up to the money aspect and the building aspect. So in all reality, Roy built Walt Disney World. Walt just had the ideas. I believe there was a banner going across here, going across here as well. And then there's this big metal tree over here in the front section. I think it's just basically condos or apartments. There's also a Stardust Lounge right here and a world of beer. So there is this door that we could try to go in, but I think the door they walked in was around the front. Now I've been here before years ago and I believe, this has been a couple years ago, I believe I mentioned they walked in here and their car pulled up, but I was recently watching that news footage and I stand corrected, they were around the front end over, on the over this way. But I like this, that there's a tiki bar here 
almost like Trader Sam's. Do you call this like a Trader Sam's almost like of the future? Full circle. And tomorrow This is some serious Disney history right here. Let's see if it looks the same around here. Now here's a photo of that banner going across. They have added on to the, the building itself. They kind of made a, like a unique little structure in front of it, but the windows and everything else match up the same. So there's the approximate angle where you can see this. It's now called the M MAA Parkside, but that little distinct structure has been built onto with the banner went across there. So the banner was way over here and where they pulled up, I am assuming is right over there on that kind of on that corner. Now this matches up a little better over here on the street side. You got the Cherry Plaza sign there. There's two guys walking down the sidewalk, the shorter end of the building. And then there's also those windows and where it says Cherry Plaza right there. And then the road that runs kind of parallel is where Governor Roy and Walt pulled up right there. Looks a lot different modern day. They would have pulled up right here the Cherry Plaza sign would have been right there. And the windows are still up there even though they've kind of added this little protrusion onto it. But that's the angle of the two guys walking in. And then to quite a bit of fanfare and hoopla when Walt and Roy pulled up right here. And in some of the, those videos and photos, there was a residence right here, a house over here, of course, since 1965. It's businesses now no longer residents over on this side. They walked in this very door, which is now the address 431A. Walked right through here, and there's a photo of Walt walking through here, and the camera's kind of going back this way. All right, they were kind enough to let us walk through here. She said the convention center area is gone. They have remodeled this whole, whole section, but right here, yeah, this is exactly where they walked through. And we didn't even realize this, but the receptionist said, oh, there's a little, a little history shrine, she called it. Now, Bricky, I'm gonna blow your mind. Roy and Walt walked right through here with the governor, walking this way a lot, right through here. Oh, right here? Yeah. What the heck? I'm so glad we walked in here. Look at this. Hayden Burns was the governor. Fun fact, if you listen, it's a pretty amazing, you know, 45 minute yeah. press conference. I highly recommend watching it. The governor says, oh, by Walt bringing his parks here, tourism is gonna double. He was a little off. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not only Walt, but of course, who this episode is about, Roy. And here's what it looked like back then. Any information on here? And this also states, November 15th of 65, Exactly 13 months to the day before Walt passed. Wow. And Roy took over. Doubled the tourism in Florida. Yeah, and then doubled and, it again. And, and again. doubled it again and doubled it again. This is incredible. I'm glad I walked in and asked because I didn't think that they were gonna have anything in here documenting this. This is a pretty good book too. I always wanted to buy this, but I never did. This thing is massive. Beautiful cover. And here is opening day, which also opening day was on October 1st. But look, this photo is from the 15th. Mm -hmm. And Roy did not give his opening day speech. They almost had a three week soft opening of sorts. Roy did his speech, I believe on the 25th or 26th. Don't quote me on that. But it was like three weeks later before Walt did that open, not Walt, but Roy, did that opening speech. I keep, I keep saying Walt, but I mean to say Roy, because Walt was not there, only in spirit. Is that a Disneyland photo? Is that Carthay Circle over the top of the train station? I think that is Disneyland. Yeah. So they have a Disneyland photo here. It happens. You know, I've actually seen photos of Walt superimposed on Main Street here at Magic Kingdom. Oh, really? Which is why, because he never made it. I talked to a cast member friend years ago, and even he had no idea that Walt never stepped foot no. in the Magic Kingdom. Only ever Disneyland. Yeah, this is cool. 
So walking right through, I can actually match a couple photos in here. This, they were very nice of us to let us walk through here. Okay, there they are walking in. Governor and Walt, Roy beside them. Kind of giving a little smile there. There's Roy over the governor's shoulder. And then they end up walking down and into kind of a very, dis not distinguished, but unique looking door down at the end right here. And I think that might still be there. So just use your imagination from 1965, then walking along here, continuing this way. And there are some elevators. I'm thinking maybe it continued on a little bit this way though. Maybe past this fake wall, past the elevators. You know, they could have gone into an elevator. Okay, Bricky and I are discussing this and he has the same opinion I do. He thinks that is an elevator they were going into. Because you can still see that there's a tile and the black concrete. Now, which elevator? Not really sure, but one of these elevators. And that letterbox probably was there. All right. Awesome. I'm glad we asked and walked in here. You know, to like really enjoy history, you always have to put it in context that when they announced this, they didn't know it was going to change the world. No. Right? Like they didn't know the wall wasn't going to make it. Like you really have to put in context of the moment of them trying to get ahead of the story, trying to, you know, lead the narrative and not knowing what was going to happen. Like that's the best part. They didn't know that they were going to just change the face of entertainment. It was just the Florida project. Yeah. They didn't even know the name. They didn't of have a name for it yet. Yeah. It's just that's the part you got to keep in mind that we know what happened, but they did it. Yeah. So awesome. the press conference was 6 yeah. years before this photo was taken. Yeah. I mean, how you People would tell you that you were crazy if you were to tell them that this was what was going to happen in six years. That just reaffirms the fact that it's always good to go in and ask somewhere. Because yep. before, I've been here before, a couple years ago, and I just assumed that it was the other entrance. Didn't even walk in and ask. I've learned something new today. That was great. She was so nice to, to let us see all of that. That was awesome. So from here, so just to kind of keep up with the timeline, they made the announcement, and then before the park opened, they came up with the name. Roy wanted it to be called Walt Disney World, and even though he had a lot of pushback from some of the other people in the, in the company, he said, no, 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 it will be called Walt Disney World, not Disney World. And he said, stop talking about it, and that's how it's gonna be. And other people wanted to change Walt's vision. He said, We're, do exactly what Walt told you to do, even though he has passed on it's going to continue like he wanted it, and it, and it did, to some, de to some degree. It's a shame that uh, that, that decision-making wasn't there for Epcot. You know, it would have been interesting to see what would have became of Epcot if Roy or Walt could have had a creative hand in it. Where that truck is pulling up is where they got out. Roy and his brother, Walt. And right over there is where it was. Arrived here now at Bay Hill which I believe is owned in some sort of affiliation with Arnold Palmer. In fact, there's a golf tournament happening at the moment. But there were five little bungalows that were here where Roy and his wife Edna stayed, as well as Joe Fowler and the other two, other prominent names in the Disney organization. But this would be the road where it was on. So you got one there, two here, three, four, and five. Now I learned about this place from my friend World of Micah when I was telling him what I was doing today. He said, oh, should go by Roy's home where Roy and Edna lived. He has been here and documented this before, but I have never shown this in any videos. So I figured this is a good tie-in. Now, according to him, he was doing some research on it. He says that this was Roy and Edna's house and they would have barbecues. You can even find this if you research it enough. They had barbecues. Roy and Edna and Joe Fowler, whose home was here. So Joe Fowler, who had a lot to do with Disneyland and Walt Disney World and an homage to Joe Fowler. There's Fowler's Harbor at Disneyland. Yeah. And then the ferry boat that goes across Seven Seas Lagoon here at Walt Disney World is the Admiral Joe Fowler. That was Joe Fowler's house for a short time up until opening day in 71. And this here was Roy and Edna. So you, you yourself 
love Joe Fowler. I do. I mean, he's one of the most interesting characters in the creation of Disneyland. Retired naval man. And Walt really needed a heavy, you know? Uh, Roy's doing finance. Walt's doing visionary stuff. And Joe's going around making sure things get done. You gotta have somebody to push over the things that nobody wants to do. So this is like corporate housing. More or less. Like Disney put them up, right. put them in this little area so they'd have a place to settle in while they were working on this project. Roy would work long hours, come home to his wife Edna at night. They would have a little BBQ in the yard here, talk about things. Pretty neat. So the two houses that are, so you got the one on the end, it's the second one from the end. These two, Fowler and Roy O, and then down on the end, two other Disney folks. I mean, they're beautiful homes, and this is a really nice neighborhood, but you can definitely tell that they were not expensive homes to build. Right. They're cylinder blocks, you can see all of the coaxial and everything that's on the outside of them. They're all the exact same build, just mirrored and flipped around. And I forgot to mention, when we were over at Lake Eola, by the way, I said we were gonna to go to the preview center next. This is kind of a, a quick little stop off. So we got detoured on the way over. But I forgot to mention that at Lake Eola, at the hotel that was a conference center where they did the, the Florida project announcement, that was the only time Walt did a public appearance anywhere in Orlando and Central Florida. That's a crazy fun fact. That's, that's pretty crazy. That's pretty wild to even think about that. Walt yeah. only did, now he did, there's Walt's plane where he fly from Burbank. Yeah. Supposedly that's going to be at D23. They are restoring it. It was here. They moved it. To, it might be at D23, Walt's plane. So he would do that, but it was never really documented and shown. It was always just someone admiring Roy's house driving by or maybe just going to the golf tournament. <laughs> There's a golf tournament happening right now, too. So history <laughs> made in Orlando with the documentation of the Florida Project announcement and then... Walt's passing, Roy came out of retirement. And basically there was a three week soft opening of Magic Kingdom, Walt Disney World. Roy did the announcement on the 26th, 27th. And then I think it was NBC, don't quote me on that, did a special and Roy and his wife watched the TV special right inside this very bungalow. And it was said, also side note, when Roy gave the opening speech, you'll notice there at Mickey came out and was standing next to Roy. That was unplanned. Oh, really? I was, I've was i always heard rumors that that was completely unplanned. Mickey walked over, and you always think, why is Mickey kind of awkwardly standing there? Yeah. Because Roy did not want to walk out to the podium. He was having such a hard time with he the memory of his... Himself. Yeah, so, so Mickey helped Roy walk out. But afterwards, Roy, after he gave that speech, went out into the Seven Seas Lagoon on a boat and didn't want to even be in the park because he wanted to give all the honor to his brother, wow. Walt, wow. which the park is named after. But I mentioned that to also mention that either on the 29th of October or, or, or the 30th of October of 71, that TV special of the opening of Walt Disney World, which kind of opened up a whole can of worms in the popularity of Central Florida started then. Roy and his wife watched the TV special in here and Roy cried watching the TV, a lot of tears were shed for his brother inside. All that's been documented, and this was the bungalow that happened. All right, and with that solemn note, we're gonna go over the preview center. This is amazing, man. This is just amazing. Makes you think. Just anything that makes them Makes it real. Makes them real people. And you know, like often I just forget that they're brothers sometimes. Cause you know, they had such a business relationship. And then you think about it, like they were brothers and, and just the amount of respect that Roy had for his little brother. And you know, Roy had the worst job. <laughs> I mean, Walt would dream it and then Roy had to go find money for it. Like not the fun job at all. And here's another interesting fact. Shortly after the opening speech, shedding tears for his brother, the memory of his brother, not retiring, which probably affected his health dramatically. A couple months later, Roy passed on. Yeah. So it's almost like I finished my, I've, I've finished my, my accomplishment. My brother has been honored. The park has opened. His vision was fulfilled. All right, moving on to the previous center. 
and now made it just on the outskirts of Disney Springs, Hotel Plaza Boulevard, the Amateur Athletic Union, which has that retro vibe before Magic Kingdom opened its doors. This was the only building that a guest could go in on property. The first major building built on property. There's a couple other smaller buildings. But as far as being one that you could visit, this was the very first one and it still stands all these years later here on Hotel Plaza Boulevard. Got to walk over there and match up a few photos I found. You getting the retro vibes? This is great. I mean, you can tell that it's from the time period, but also not a very expensive build out. You know, you could like just look at the building and tell exactly what it was intended to do. Awareness and sell some tickets. And they did sell a lot of tickets. A, an exorbitant amount, not for opening day, but for just for the few, first few years the WDW would be open. I had trouble saying that, WDW. I always say that, but it's short for Walt Disney World. They also had a gift shop. So you could. this was the first gift shop on Walt Disney World property as well. And they had a film that they would show, a preview, if you will, of what was things to come for the Florida Project and Magic King, eventual Magic Kingdom. And they'd have cast members and characters here. Quite an assortment online of vintage photographs and videos. Take a look at this. Preview center. Shown right there, that's the angle, more or less, kind of kind of from that a little bit closer up as they're walking up the second set of stairs to go in. Take a look at this one. It almost looks like an oversized bonsai tree in the front, kind of from this angle. That tree's been removed and the sign up front also removed. I believe there was a gazebo over by the water over there back then in those days as well. Some of the original cast members standing in front of the building as well. Very unique architecture. Distinctive. And here's a photo of the construction. They haven't even paved the roads around the side, the parking areas. The road in the front is paved. And you can see some classic car alerts there. Take a look at some of those vintage vehicles. This is kind of an aerial perspective. And then the Hotel Boulevard down below. Now take a look at Pluto and Goofy here. Pluto's waving. Actually, right where my shadow is. My phone away. That's right where Pluto was standing. You were just telling me something, so repeat what you were just saying. I was just saying that it's amazing that it looks like an administrative building, right? Like, if you saw this downtown, this yeah. would be the library or the DMV. And it just goes to show that like, they've always thought about it as a small city. This doesn't look like anything that says theme park whatsoever. Nothing here says theme park. And really nothing in the parks modern day or even back then really looks like this. No. It literally just looks like what it was supposed to be, a welcome center. And the sign was right there, the welcome sign was right there. Yeah. I've never been in this building. We had pretty good luck at where the Florida Project announcement was. But right there, there's a lot of photos online too of cast members and, you know, what would eventually be guests taking the picture in front of the, the sign here. Yeah, I love this. Frank Lloyd Wright style stacking of the different layers. Yeah. Oh, so it's been a while. That's great. Was allowed inside for a moment. Was talking talking to the receptionist. She said it was all remodeled. You could definitely tell. I got a quick little look down the hallway. It doesn't look the same as this anymore. But you could see the windows, even from this inside perspective. The windows, even looking from outside, still look the same. And you kind of had a walkway. So if we were inside, there was a walkway that went this way that had a bunch of kind of images of things to come at Disney World, Walt Disney World, all through there. Now it's mostly just offices and whatnot inside. There used to be topiaries out yeah. here as well. Topiaries all around the side. And there's the lake over there where the gazebo was. 
if you were to put this building anywhere, World Showcase would be the area where the future world would be. Future world. world. Is it get an Epcot vibe? It has that vibe. It's that same era, the stacking design, the long gated, the, the levels of concrete and using the landscaping like Frank Lloyd Wright did to separate space. It's that's the vibe. Trying to figure out where those topiaries exactly were. I think maybe around the other side. The topiaries look like they were in almost in a little planter, so they weren't they weren't in the ground. But the area the topiaries were were right over along this section, somewhere in this region. Ah, the preview center. And here's a copy of the pamphlet. Now Disney at Disney Springs, you can purchase some of this retro merch. They have brought this, this is the original logo, but they have brought it back. And this was the entire pamphlet kind of explained what was going to be happening. It was open daily from nine to five. A motion picture describing the vacation kingdom of the world. That's what they were calling it. Featuring models, construction photographs, artist renderings. The exciting Walt Disney World Preview Center is now open. Open every day, 15 miles southwest of Orlando, Florida. Some serious history right here. I'm glad the building still stands. And according to this, the scale model was 600 square feet. That's a big model. That's a huge model. 600 square feet. Wow. And even more photos inside. Cast member there showing off. Oh, I see a photo on the wall there of the contemporary. And then this is a picture it's the Three Caballeros and Mickey. Oh, that's like Maestro Mickey right there in the middle. All right. That's going to do it for today. Bricky, Adventures in Design. Do you want to give away how long you're here for or are you keeping it spoiler free? Oh, I'm here for a week, baby. You're here for a week. Five days in the park, three days in the Star Wars Hotel. I'm, I'm chasing it. You're doing the Star Wars Hotel? Yeah. Well, this, you kind of started off with a little a little history, a little prehistory of the parks, and now you're gonna go right into the parks. Can I tell people what I've been calling today? Yeah. I've been calling this the Fifth Gate Tour by Adam the Woo, because it's literally been a full afternoon of fun Disney stuff. And for somebody who loves the vibes and the design, that's all this has been. No Lightning Lane, no Genie Plus, no waiting in line, just all vibes. What's the statement you always say? You're a vibe crusher, not a ride crusher? I'm a vibe chaser. Vibe chaser. Yeah, not a ride crusher. He's a vibe chaser, Just not a ride crusher. Just the vibe. I like, I, I kind of both. I'm probably 75% vibe, 25% rides. That's a good mix. That's a healthy That's mix. That's good. That's a healthy Do you go mix. on any rides? Yeah, I'm like a 90 10. Okay. 10% of the time I'm like, oh, I'll ride it. But I like to ride it with other people, which is essentially catching their vibe. Oh. And by the way, I'm, I'm so done. I just want to defend myself. I'm not short. I'm not short. The last time I was in a video with Adam, everyone was like, how tall is this guy? I'm not short. Side by side? Side by side. Just a couple inches on me. But Adam I'm has six, this move. I'm 6'3". Adam has this move where he makes everybody look like they're in that room. Here you go. Grab the camera. <laughs> Grab the camera. There we go. See? See? I'm not a short guy. 5'11". Just <laughs> Adam's very tall. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over. Thanks for letting me do this.